Hey YouTube, uh, in this video I'll be teaching you how to take square roots by hand, um, and that'll work for any number, not just easy numbers like 25 or 36. You can take the square root of 2, you can take the square root of pi, it'll work for any number. It's easy to learn, it's fast, and it's the best method I've learned so far, so let's get right into it. Okay, so the first step is pretty easy. You just want to take whatever number you want to take the square root of and group it into pairs of 2. So for example, if your number was 84,765.2347, this is how you'd want to group it. An important note is that you want to group it from the decimal outwards. So 65 would be a group, 47 would be a group, and this 8 is by itself, but that's fine, because you could imagine that there's a 0 here, so this would be okay. Um, one way you wouldn't want to do it would look like this. So here, if you started grouping from the front forwards, um, you would end up with this 5 by itself, and that's not okay. So this would be wrong. It's important that you group from the decimal outwards so that your groups are correct. So for the second step, you're going to want to draw your number in a box, sort of like you're doing a division problem, but it's going to be a little bit different. Um, you want to look at the first group. You might have two numbers, you might have one number, just like me. Um, but the question you're going to ask yourself is, what is the biggest number you can square without going over this group? So for me, it's just 8, and I know that 2 squared is 4, but 3 squared is 9. So 3 is too big, and 2 is just exactly what we need. Okay, so you're going to want to write a 2 up here. You're going to want to put a 2 on the side here as well. And then you're going to want to put the value of 2 squared under the first group. And... Just like long division, you're going to want to subtract this out. So that would give us a 4 here. And now here's the important part. That's probably the biggest difference between long division and taking square roots. Instead of dropping the next number down, you're going to drop the next group down. So here you would have a 4, and then next to the 4, you're going to drop the next group here. So this would become 447. And now the last step of, or I guess the last sub-step of step 2 is you're going to want to double this number and write it below and to the left. You're going to want to leave some space. So right here should be good. And if you're wondering why this number is red, just hold off for a second. It'll, it'll make sense later on. But this is essentially the initial iteration. And step three is pretty much the same thing, but it's a little bit different. And step three will just be completed until you have as many digits of the number as you want. So in step two, you might have wondered why I told you to leave some space here. Uh, the reason is because you're going to have to put a number here. So the first thing you want to do in step three is ask yourself, what number can you put here such that this two-digit number multiplied by whatever this number is will be as close to this number without going over? And that sounds kind of complicated and difficult at first, but it's actually pretty simple. So imagine that we put a 2 here, and 2 is not the correct answer, but just imagine for a second. So let's say we just guess that this is a 2. So what we would need to do is 2 multiplied by 42, which would be 84, and 84 is considerably smaller than 447. So we know that's probably not the right answer. And in this case, it's actually pretty easy to see that 9 is the right answer. So if we put a 9 here, this now becomes 49. And if we think, what is 49 times 9? You could think that 50 times 9 is going to be 450. So we know that the 9 digits we lose is going to be less than this. And this would be equal to 441. So we would put that number here. And as you could guess, that is the closest we can get to 447 without going over. Okay, so once you're absolutely sure that the number you've added here is correct, you can add it to the top here, just like that. So the 9 belongs next to the 2. And just like in the last step, you're going to subtract this out. So we would end up with just a 6 here. And just like in the previous step, we're going to drop down the entire next group. So this would become 665. And now over here, this step is going to be a little bit different than what we did in step 2. Um, for step 3, you're going to take this number here and you're going to add it to the first digit of itself. 
So that's partly why I'm writing these first digits in red and I'm writing the rest of the number in black. So you would do 49 plus 9 and you would write that here. So that's going to be 58 and you'll notice just like last time we're going to leave some space here because we're going to be writing a number here. And now this part is essentially just the same as what we did last time. We're going to fill in a digit here such that when we multiply this entire number by the first digit we get a number as close to 665 as we can without going over. And in this case, it's actually pretty easy because you'll notice if we put a 1 here, 581 times 1 is pretty close to 665. And clearly, if we double this, it's going to be over 1,000. So the right answer here is just 1. So we can add a 1 here, and we can also add a 1 up here because we're pretty sure that that's correct. Now, finally, we want to multiply 581 by 1, which is just 581, so we're going to write that down here. And we'll subtract this out to see what we get. So this is going to be 84. And now, you'll notice step 3 never ends, because we're assuming that the result here is going to be irrational, so we're going to get as many digits as we want. So we're going to keep repeating this process over and over until we're satisfied with our answer. So just like last time, we're going to go ahead and drop down the next group. So here we're going to get 23, so we'll drop that down here. So we're going to get 8,423. And over here, we're going to take this number and we're going to add it to the first digit of itself, right? So that means 581 plus 1 is going to be 582, and we'll write that here. And as always, we're going to leave some space here so we could write the next digit. An important note here is we've just dropped down the first group past the decimal point. So what that means is we can draw in a decimal point here because we know the next digit we're going to get is going to be in the tenths place. So as you can see, we've added in a decimal here. So now we're going to repeat the exact same process. What number can we put here? So when we multiply it by this entire number, it'll be as close to 8,423 as possible without going over. And here, it's also pretty obvious, because you can tell this is going to be a 1. Because if we just multiply this by 1, it's going to be somewhat close to 8,000. But more importantly, if we were to put a 2 here, we know this would give us an answer over 10,000. And that would be too big. So we can be sure that this answer is going to be a 1. So I'm going to fill in a 1 here. And I'm also going to add a 1 up top, because we're sure that answer is correct. And now we have to multiply 5,821 by 1, which of course is just itself, and we're going to write that down here. And now we can subtract this out to see what answer we get. Okay, so the answer here is just 2,602. Um, hopefully you're starting to get the hang of this method. I think I'll just find one more digit to make this precise enough for most real-world applications. So what I'm going to do is drop down this last group here. So this becomes 260,247, and we'll use this to just try and find one more digit. So we're going to take this value here, and we're going to add it to the first digit of itself. So 5,821 plus 1 is going to be 5,822, and we'll write that here. So here we have it, and now let's try to find one more digit. So what number do we have to write here so that when we multiply it by this whole number, it'll be as close to this without going over. And at this point, you might start to think that, well, you know, these numbers are getting big. I don't really know what these products are offhand, but you can usually just estimate, and the answer is gonna give you a pretty good idea of what it should be. So, for example, let's take this to be about 60,000. We know that 60,000, or we can think of it just as six times four is 24. So 60,000 times four is going to be 240,000. Um, so that's probably a good guess. So let's try four. So what you would find if you were to multiply this out is that this number falls somewhere around 230,000. But if you were to put a five here and multiply it out, it would actually be around 290,000. So that verifies that this four is correct. And since we're not gonna get any more digits, we don't have to write it down here. Um, we can just add the 4 up here, and we'll leave it as is. So, there we have it. Um, an important point to keep in mind is, if, let's say, this weren't precise enough for you, and you wanted to continue going, you could just continue to add zeros past this point, and put them all into groups of two. So, for example, like this, these could keep going, and this process never needs to end, and you can get as many digits as you want. 
Um, but I think that's enough for this video. So I'm going to end it here. I hope you guys have learned this and understand it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Bye.